Hello everyone, I'm your hostess with the mostest, 8 Second Gaming, and today we're going to be talking about something that a lot of people universally struggle with. Now, a couple of videos ago, I did do a uh, kind of like an answering the community's questions, and in one of those, I talked about positioning and how you should always be looking to take high ground. High ground is king. But in that video, somebody asked a question saying like, what if you have to take low ground? Like, how do you fight from low ground? So this VOD review is a perfect example of how to win when you don't have the best bottom zone, when you have low ground and it's, it's going to kind of go over exactly what you need to do with how, on how to win even if you don't have the best spot so we're going to break that down but just quickly if you guys like these types of videos if you guys want to see more stuff like this where i break videos down go in depth show you what you need to do and even more you need to check out the game leap website over there we have top level coaches including myself creating highly in-depth courses and guides in order to make you the best apex player that you can possibly be so if you guys really want to start climbing hit diamond masters or even predator click the link in the description pick yourself up a membership and actually start climbing today but now diving right into this vod review we have to do a little bit of setup first so in this my teammate is dead uh his banner did time out it's a little bit unfortunate but it happens uh people die people die as like third party stuff like that now you're not always going to have your teammate this would work even if we had three it'd be a lot easier if we had three actually but you know it, it helps to add into the situation that we only have two to kind of show that you can still do this even if you're down a man so even if you are down don't give up in the game so in this right now, my teammate is playing over here because we want to establish presence in this cave because we're looking to play something right here. So we are playing very split from each other. We know that there is a team right in front of me somewhere over here, kind of, I guess I could draw right here, out in front of the cave right there. So we know there's a team here. So we don't want them to come up through where I am right here. So I'm establishing a little bit of presence right here. I want to see where they go. I want to see what they take. Basically, I want to force them to go in front of the in front of the cave, not come this way so that we have a little bit of a better area to play over here because we don't have to worry about our back. If we were playing here and we had to worry about a team coming back through here, that could be really dangerous and end the game for us. So even though we're a little split from each other, we're showing enough presence and we're handling ourselves well enough so that we don't have to worry about any teams kind of sending into us, pushing us and we're close enough that we can help each other no matter what happens. So this is something that you guys need to be looking to do in your games. If you are trying to play a really bad position, you need to be establishing enough presence to show people around you that you don't want to be messed with. So now going forward here, we can see that a Wraith is starting to pop her portal right back here. So with that, I know that she is trying to get her team somewhere else. So I'm really just making sure that when she comes out of this phase, if she's over here or anywhere in front of here or over here, that she knows that I'm here and that she doesn't want to come this way. The, the big thing that people mess up is if they see a Wraith portal like this, they would try to get a little bit over aggressive on it. If the Wraith goes somewhere else, like if she's trying to get this house up here, then they would try to move up to the edge of the cave and they would try to be taking shots towards this house. And that's what would get them cracked. And that's what would get them kind of put. If they're going away from you, don't be over aggressive. You don't have to really chase them if you don't want to, if you don't have to. If they're going away from you, you've basically won. They're not going to try and mess with you. They're not going to try and do anything uh, kind of stupid after that. Uh, stupid is a harsh word, but kind of works here. So don't be overly aggressive if you don't have to. If they're just going to run past, which in this example they do, they just portal by. I send a couple shots just to let them know that, hey, like, you know, we're still here. I'm still in here. Don't worry about me. And once I see that all of them kind of go through in the portal and all of them are taking spots away from me, then I don't really have to worry about it because they're not going to come up here. They're not going to worry about me. They're not going to. I don't have to worry about them. They're creating a natural barrier because now that they're playing this house, nobody can really sneak past them without kind of creating noise so as long as that team is is in that house and playing that area there's kind of this weird bubble that they create and because of that bubble i don't really have to worry as much because nobody's really going to try and run past them nobody's going to try and run through them if anything they're going to fight them i'm going to hear that i'm going to know something's going down and then i can make adjustments based off that so that's just kind of something that you guys need to be watching out for in your games if someone's going to help you let them help you now jumping forward because we were able to hold a cave like that we knew that nobody was coming up behind us so this isn't the best 
spot here. You know, right now I'm just looking for spots to play, but we're paying attention to where people are in kind of the vicinity towards us. We know that there's a team up on high ground, so we're not really trying to, to pressure them a lot because they have a better spot than we do. But once we hear the team to our, our right fighting over there, we want to make sure that they don't have time to reset. We want to make sure that they have a really tough time because if we let them kind of relax and, and get set up and kind of breathe a little bit, they can easily just walk up right here and be pressuring us. And if the team from height over here doesn't want to help us and they start shooting at us instead of instead of these guys, then we can be in a really tough situation. So right now we want to keep as much pressure on these guys as we possibly can. So my race starts to move up. But once I realize that my race is the only one that can really play like this because there is that team on height, I do turn around. You don't always have to go with your teammates. Let your teammates play solo. Trust them enough to be able to do something like that. So when my race goes up, I start to look on the high ground team and just send a couple shots at them to kind of keep them occupied looking at me instead of at my wraith right now i don't need to be hitting these shots it is nice if i do hit them uh, i'd rather not be shot but as you can see my wraith is doing damage she's able to knock a gibraltar uh he's calling out a bunch of damage he's saying that he's doing a bunch of damage to people so i want to let him fight that as easily as he can without as much pressure so i don't want to be letting these these teams shoot down on them and it's something you guys gonna need, need to be paying attention to because in your games you can't let people pressure your teammates this is something i see a lot and when i do vod reviews for people when i when i look over people's gameplays when i watch people's streams they don't apply enough pressure for their teammates they're always looking at how do they get angles how do they get more damage sometimes you don't have to be the hero sometimes you can be the carry of the team without actually doing all the damage if my teammate wasn't able to play this as easily as he's playing it right now we would be in a very bad situation so because we're able to just sit back and have these teams be pressured uh, I do, do try, try to throw a couple grenades to help them out but other than that I'm, I'm back to shooting at these guys and I want to keep that guy uh, kind of looking at me and as soon as he goes to shooting my teammate I'm going to shoot him uh, I was gonna try and shoot that crypto drum but it didn't work out but the moment that I kind of relaxed on the pressure is the moment that my teammate almost dies and you can see how important that pressure is because my teammate dropped a lot of health right here so it is possible that he could have died I needed to be applying a lot more pressure there so it's something that I slipped up on and how you guys can learn from my mistakes so this is just kind of a simple way to play an area like this is playing wide, applying pressure to teams that could be applying pressure to you and let your teammates play split. Trust your teammates enough to be the carry, to do what they need to do. I see a lot of people talking about their random suck or their teammates uh, don't do enough damage. Let them do that, that damage. I'm sure if I was to watch some people's gameplay, you wouldn't be helping your team as much as you actually think that you would be helping your team. You'd be looking for angles. You'd be looking to try to be the hero. You don't always have to do that. Let them be the hero sometimes and just be the support. That is a way more helpful most of the time than actually doing the damage. If you let them be the carry and just support them, that will carry you a lot further in games than you actually might think it would. So it's just something there to kind of keep in the back of your mind during your next rank game. Now, this is where the really interesting stuff comes into play. This is where the low ground fighting really comes in and this is where we're gonna be talking about how to kind of win from these these low ground spots so right now the only spot that we can really play is over here we don't want to play in this crater because obviously they have shots on us we can't really play these bins because they're really small they could just nade us out we need to be playing a spot that has enough kind of real estate so that we can play uh, at least wide enough and have enough spots to kind of hold so right now this is really the only spot that's in that offers that kind of area for us so right now i'm letting my wraith take the heat and push up first because if, if they get cracked if they get kind of hurt they can just phase and then afterwards when everybody's reloading and kind of the attention's off me a little bit that's when i'm gonna go because you don't want to just run out when everybody's got their their guns kind of looking at that area you want to wait until they're reloading they're not paying attention something like that and then you want to take your opportunity to move because if i were to just go right now they would just switch target look at me and I would be dead so I wait just a couple seconds by hopping down here and hiding behind this crafter so I wait right here and I wait for the perfect opportunity I scan see that those two solos are fighting and those are teams three and four so four squads left there's two solos fighting I want to just be as big of a nuisance as I can and try to do a sky nade try to hit a god nade possibly snag a kill Unfortunately, I'm not able to get that, but as soon as I kind of have an opportunity here, I am moving to the side here and I am getting to my teammate. Now, this is where the low ground stuff really comes into play, and this is what you guys really need to be paying attention to. In order to win a low ground fight, you need to be 
basically waiting for the enemy teams to slip up. You need to be making sure that you have the opportunity to take advantage of any small mistakes that they make. So there, my teammate was able to hop down, uh, finish the kill on the other solo. So now it is a 3v2 or 2v3, sorry, I should say. It is us versus the enemy team. So right now, I don't want to let them get anything for free. So I want to peek up here. I want to look at some angles. Uh, I would have liked to play the head glitch a little bit longer, but unfortunately, I did get pushed off of it. So here, I'm just going to do a little bit of uh, heal up a little bit. My teammate does get to shoot the drone. I activate alt. And this is something that you guys need to be paying attention to. As soon as that horizon alt hit the floor and we knew where it was, you're shooting it. You do not let horizon alts go off. Horizon alts are very easy to destroy. Uh, they, they take a decent amount of time to deploy and they're very annoying to fight around. So as soon as a horizon alt hits the ground, if you have line of sight on it, shoot it no matter what, because you do not want to get sucked into it. You do not want to play around it. Just destroy it because now they wasted a huge ultimate and they've wasted grenades also. So right now I'm just basically like playing above us uh, or looking to, like at the people that are playing above us, trying to get some shots on them. I'm able to get some really nice damage and then armor swap here. But this is another thing that's really key because my Wraith is portaling. She's looking to play off angles. If you look, she portaled over over here so they're getting off angles and they're making the, the, the team up top kind of panic a little bit because they don't know where we're playing they don't know what angles we're trying to take and that is playing into the uh making mistakes because if they overcommit to one of us and the the other one is able to get shots on them that is a huge opportunity for us so right now i'm still playing by the portal because i can just take it if i need to I'm scanning, I'm just kind of looking. Now that I realize that they're not pressuring me, I just want to heal up a little bit, kind of get back to full health, because you never really want to fight with a lower armor than you have to. After that, I'm going to get a scan, and I'm going to look for angles right here. They're not paying attention to me. They're paying attention to my Wraith. My Wraith was able to get a lot of really good angles and create a big distraction so that I'm able to get some free shots here. It was a weird, like a weird spot. Uh, there's like a little lip that your character would climb up onto, so it was uh, kind of messing with my aim a little bit. But again, my Wraith is going for angles. You can see there that she was taking the zip line she phased up uh the guy was actually in discord with me he said i'm making a play here so he because this team dropped off height completely all three of them are in this little area right here they gave up this high ground for free that's a huge mistake because now my wraith is able to just walk up here take angles i'm able to play down here and take angles and that is a huge mistake that they did they hopped off high ground technically they still have high ground on me so they didn't really think a whole lot of it but they didn't pressure this us enough they didn't create enough of a of an angle right here to really deal anything from us and that is what you guys need to do when playing from low ground wait for them to make a mistake dropping off high ground too early giving a positioning stuff like that and then attack that take advantage of their huge mistakes and then from there we're able to get a really nice one clip on the crypto so now that the crypto set is a 2v2 my teammate's sending shots at the Bloodhound at me, so I'm able to get uh, the Bloodhound down, and then we're looking for the Horizon. I didn't hear her. There was no audio on that, but thankfully, I was able to get a really nice chunk, and then my teammate was able to wipe it up, and we won. So even if you have low ground, even if you have a really bad spot in zone, you don't really have to lose. This is a simple situation as long as you're able to look for the right things. Look for mistakes. Play with presence. Play split. Trust your teammates. There's a whole lot of things that you guys need to do in order to win these situations. So I really hope this video helped you out. You learned something new fighting from low ground can be tough but it's not impossible so thank you guys for watching once again i'm eight second gaming come check me out on twitch twitch tv slash eight second gaming and i will see you in the next one